Heyo everyone, Zane here. And before I officially start, I want to thank all of you who subscribe to my channel and specifically you who's currently watching this video. By the time I'm editing this, we're on 850 subscribers, which is a lot compared to last time and that's just amazing. Also, a quick reminder, list of materials are in the description and I do have a shop where I sell my handmade products and you'll also find sculpting tools and metal findings for your own DIY projects. Link is also in the description. Now it's Halloween and so we'll be making a 6 inch figure of the Pumpkin King or the King of Halloween Jack Skellington from the Nightmare Before Christmas. This isn't going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial like most of my miniature videos as I wasn't able to record some of the process because there's a lot of small details and I need to go out frame for those since I don't really have a lot of room to work with. Nevertheless, I hope you'll enjoy watching and that you'll learn something. I'll be explaining some of the process and also give out some tips so let's start! First, I planned on using this half round molder as a measuring tool because I initially thought I'd be able to make this a step-by-step -step thing. But obviously, I ended up not doing that because I don't have much time to work on this project while also recording it. Anyway, you can use this molder for such purpose, especially in cases that you want to make multiple pieces of a certain design or parts that needs a consistent amount of clay like the arms and the legs. I do have this molder available in my shop. In case it's out of stock when you take a look, don't worry, I make sure to restock the sold out items as soon as I can. So I started by measuring clay for the legs. Once I get the same amount of clay for both legs, I roll the clay to my desired length and thickness. Do the same for the arms. While I let the arms and the legs dry, I'm making the upper body with white clay. Then I use black clay for the lower half of the torso. I connected the upper and lower part with a stainless wire. And then with clay. And before I forget and let the clay dry completely, I also inserted stainless wire to the legs and arms. You can only do this if you're using a stainless wire with air dry clay. If you're forgetful like me, you can also just drill a hole in the parts and insert the wire after the clay is fully dried. Do the same if your wire is not stainless. This part, I twisted the wire since the clay is thick enough unlike the others. Did the same for the body.
And again, I forgot to add allowance to the length of the clay, so it shrank. Now I have to extend it again and this time add allowance since it also shrank. To even out the connections, I use water and also sand it when it's dry. I wouldn't really advise connecting clays like this if you don't plan on painting over the piece because the connections leave a mark somehow. Can't really explain it but it's not visible here because of the color of the clay. However, you'll see the outline of the shape of the new clay. Not exactly sure if it's because of the coloring I used or not though. So I guess just test it out if you're planning to do that. But since I will be painting over this piece, I do the step to make the piece as seamless as possible because that's how I prefer it. But if you're fine with having seams on your work, then that's also good. I extended all parts of the trunk and polished their connections. While letting them dry, I started making the head. It was a little difficult for me to shape the head since the clay is still soft, so a little pressure deforms it. I added a little clay triangle for the nose and connected it with the face with water as well. Then I slowly cut through the face for the mouth. I shaped the protruding eyebrows using rounded fondant sculpting tools. I plan on making all the tools I use available in my shop. I'm slowly adding new products since I'm basing it on my budget, so feel free to browse or do give my shop a follow. I totally appreciate it. Here I redid the nose because I messed up the nostril part. Use the needle tool to poke holes on the nose. Since the clay is white, the details aren't really that visible in the camera due to the lighting. So here I turned off one of my lights so you can see the details a bit. So far, here's what it looks like. It's still pretty messy at this stage, to be honest. I didn't quite like the shape of the back of the head here, so I decided I will add more clay to it and define the shape better. I extended the lower torso with more black clay and then shaped it out based on the pose. I actually miscalculated the length of the lower torso and made it a little longer than it should be, since I can't quite determine the length on the reference I'm looking at. I realized it later when I already attached the legs, so in the end, I just had to accept it. So, I'm connecting the torso and the legs with clay again, and then polish it. I also got a new rolling pin which is plastic material. Now I don't need to worry about the clay sticking to it. This will also be available on my shop soon. It comes with these rings that serve as guides for the thickness so you can roll the clay evenly if you want to. Let me actually show you a little demo. Ta-da! <laughs> but that's too thick than I want it to, so I'll get rid of the rings for now. I had quite a difficult tea thinking of how to approach the coat since its shape is quite complicated with all the curves and even the long back part. So to make things easier, I decided to divide the whole coat into parts. First the back part.
then the front part. Oh, and by the way, I drew a guide on the chest for the shape. And sorry for being out of frame most of the time. Anyway, I just tried to wing it as much as I possibly can. <laughs> if I didn't get the shape right, I just used another clay and then connect it, shape it, polish it. That's basically the process for this whole thing, <laughs> to be completely honest. Now I'm cutting the collar part of the coat. And there we go. That's just the upper part of the coat. Now let's make the long back part of the coat. For this part, it's actually easier if you have a guide of the coat shape and just trace it. I'm too lazy to do that here so I just estimated the shape while looking at the reference. I cut it in half so that I could make both sides symmetrical. And then do the connect and polish steps again. To those who don't know, I make my own clay and thin pieces like this are quite flexible when completely dry as you can see. However, even though it's flexible, that doesn't mean it won't break if it's not handled properly. I do have a tutorial on how I make my clay and do check it out if you are interested. Anyway, I already painted the clothing with black acrylic before painting it with the white stripes. I'm using a triple zero brush to paint the white stripes on the clothing. I have a 3 set fine liner brush like this available on my shop as well. Although it looks different than what I'm using here but the brush sizes are pretty much the same. I decided to paint on the white stripes now before attaching the coat since it'll cover the back part of the lower torso. Painting these lines are very challenging, especially because my hands are shaky and to make things worse, I also drank coffee before doing this, so yeah, palpitations, right? And my hands are shakier. This is sped up to 10 times speed so it doesn't look that typical, but yeah. This is how I paint in real time and I do it really slowly but surely so that I make it less messy as much as possible. I realized the end of the sleeves are still thin, so I had to add another clay and fix the shape. While it dries, I attach the long back part of the coat. I first sanded the lower edge of the back coat so the new clay will attach directly to the existing clay. You know, clay to clay connection is pretty strong especially when you use glue to stick it together. Okay, so here it is now. There's a protruding part on the connection here but I'll fix it later when it's dry and then sand it down to even it up. And here it is after sanding. Also painted it with black acrylic before painting the white stripes. I'm already so pleased with how it's looking so far here and also very excited on the outcome. You might notice that I painted some lines a little thicker because I put a little too much pressure on the brush and that's not really good. 
Some lines are also noticeably squiggly, and I fixed it by painting it over with black acrylic. Now I'm making the shoes with black clay. I sculpt the shape by cutting some parts out with cuticle scissors and then define the shape with sculpting tools. I'll polish the shape again once it's fully dry. It's time to connect the arms. I actually forgot to put a hole for the shoulder, so I just drilled the hole here to connect the arms. Notice that I cut out some parts on the shoulder end to connect it better with the body. Again, I added some clay and then shaped it roughly and polished it later. Now I'm making the tie and this time I trace it with a guide so it's easier. Again, this is going to shrink so I added some allowance. And oops, let me fix that quickly. Carefully take it off. I'll let it try and polish it later. I didn't record making the bat face, it's just too small. I forgot to record how I added the black clay on the eyes here, but I basically just put black clay onto it and then push it around with the rounded sculpting tool. Here I'm painting the mouth part with black acrylic using triple zero brush. So here's everything I got so far. The tie, the bad face, shoes, and the head. And here's a supposed base I made but it's not yet completely dry at the moment. So I figured not to use it yet, I still need to polish it and then paint it with black. It's made from scrap clay which is why it has that kind of texture. I stick the bad face on the tie with wood glue. Wood glue is much stronger than regular white glue, so if you want to connect fragile pieces together, wood glue is basically much preferable. I use Sino to put the shoes and legs together. I didn't say earlier, but I also use Sino to put the arm together with the body. The Sino dripped down the back, so I had to send that part down to get rid of the dried glue. Some of the glue also got on my hands, and I fixed it by also letting the glue dry enough sand it and wash my hands. If this happens to you, just do your best not to make your skin stick together because that's going to be much tricky to fix. Here I already painted the tie. Again, too small to hold so it's difficult to record. I figured it'd be difficult to add a neck if I already stick the tie on. I applied wood glue on the wire to make the clay stick to it enough that I can shape it out. I applied wood glue to put the head and neck together. Recording making the hands is also difficult, so I'll just show a bit of it. I roll white clay very thin and then add sections to it with a plastic tool using my reference as a guide. And then I insert a thin wire, again stainless, on the end so I can connect it to the other parts. I usually don't like making thin small parts like this because it's really really fragile but this is basically a scaled figure so I did it anyway.
Now I'm connecting all of them together using Sino. And there we have it! The Pumpkin King Jack Skeleton is done! I'm so happy with how it turned out. I haven't coated this yet since I ran out of varnish, but yeah. Always make sure to coat your works when you use air dry clay. That's all! Happy Halloween everyone and see you in the next video! Thank you as always, stay safe and stay crafty! Bye!